sing that next verse. Which one's the closest deacon in the back? Danny, how about going around, checking around outside and see anybody out there run them in here, okay? I think we've got some, uh, maybe a couple of boys defected here a little while ago. And so, uh, see anybody out there, uh, run them in or off? Okay. Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6. Now, if you were with us this morning, you know, we began this message, and I guess you figure we probably got the worst part of it over with, and I guess maybe might have, but uh, there's some other things that God hates, and we began the message this morning on seven things God hates. Seven things God hates. You will not hear this on national radio or broadcast or television. You just won't hear it. They just don't mention things like this is because they think that hate is a bad word and that you're supposed to love everything, including the devil. But that's not what the Word of God teaches. The Bible said Job was a, a perfect and upright man that feared God and eschewed evil. The Bible said, Ye that love the Lord hate evil. You can't love God and love the devil and sin at the same time. Uh, if a man don't hate some things, he ain't no count. Uh, he, there's some things y'all, if you, if ever you just love Jesus, love the devil, love sin, love Bible, love, you know, love Playboy, love, if you love everything, there's something wrong with you. You ought to love some things and have some things. And so we see here in Proverbs 6, there's seven things that God hates. We preached about the first two this morning, and the Lord willing will look briefly at the other five. As we look at it, verse number 16. But before we do, I want you to, uh, we appreciate uh, Brother Richard back with us tonight. I didn't know he was here until somebody told me. It's good to see you back, brother. He's the one, you know, that had the bad car wreck here. Uh, it's been how long? Two months ago now? And he liked to get killed. Look at him sitting there looking fine. Do what? Yeah. <laughs> he does. He's got broke all the pieces and... And I tell you, I praise God for, for, for raising him up and bringing him to church. All right, Proverbs 6 and verse 16. These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Help me, help me. I don't know what the new Bible say about that verse right there. I doubt if they say God hates anything. I doubt it. We could check them. i got a stack of them up here, but we'll just go on and read. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, and a heart that deviseth wicked imagination, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Let's bow our heads while we pray. 
Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, God, that we have to bow here in your presence and call thee our Father. Thank you for the Word of God that's quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. We thank you this evening, Lord, for the good songs of Zion, for the prayers that have been paid, for, uh, for everything that's been done, for the special singing, for the congregation, for Brother Johnny and, and Sister Kathy and, and Brian and the musician God. And Lord, we thank you for all that you've given us here this evening. Now, dear Lord, we come before thee looking into thy holy, infallible, inerrant word. God, we realize and know tonight that without it we wouldn't have anything to preach. We wouldn't have anything to teach or to learn or study. And so we pray tonight, Lord, that you may open our minds and hearts to the Word of God. Lord, anoint these lips of clay that we may say what needs to be said here in this service tonight. God, you know who's here. You know what the need is. And I pray you admit it for the glory of God. Help us from thy Word. Let not any iniquity have dominion over us. Oh, God, take away sin out of our lives. Anything that would hinder the moving of the blessed Spirit of God, I pray you'd move it out right now. I pray demons will be blocked. The power of the devil will be held off of this place that people may hear and sink down into their ears the truth of God. Whatever you do for us, we'll praise you and thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray and for Jesus' sake. Amen. Now, preaching to you this thing on the seven things God hates, as you know, as we gave the introduction to this message, we told you that God does hate some things. We talked this morning about a proud look. God hates a proud look. Something that 99% of us uh, have a problem with is our old stinking pride. And boy, many times we know God wants us to do something, but we're too proud to do it. Now, pride's your enemy tonight, and if you really think you're something tough, God can't use you until you realize that you're just an old hunk of clay that He picked up and made you out of. A proud look is the look of, I'm something, I'm somebody. I'm special. Everybody see me. Everybody look at me. That's what God hates. He hates it in preachers. He hates it in singers. He hates it in girls. He hates it in boys. He hates it in politicians. He hates it in any type of life. God hates a proud look. And then I told you that God hates a lying tongue. And telling old soul panic liars. And we talked about all the lies that's going on, that type of thing. And God hated it. But now we're going to move on to the third thing that God hates this evening. And the third thing that God hates is hands that shed innocent blood. In other words, it's hands who take somebody who is not guilty of a crime and brother causes their blood to be shed. Bible said God hates those hands that shed innocent blood. Now, there's a prophetic ring to this verse. As soon as you read it, you can't help but let your mind jump over there to the New Testament when Pilate washed his hands and said, I have nothing to do with him. And Judas said, I have betrayed innocent blood. The men who delivered up Jesus Christ to be crucified were shed innocent blood. And brother, I don't know whether you realize it or not, but you and I had our part in these hands nailing our Savior to the cross and shedding that innocent blood. You know, they ain't never, when you really get right down to it, they ain't never been but one person had innocent blood besides Adam before he sinned. And I believe there's some other implications of this verse that I'm going to mention in a moment. But as far as doctrine this evening, the innocent blood would be the Lord Jesus Christ and God hates a hand that shed His precious blood. But you know, when you think about it on a practical practical level. There's been a lot of cases down through history when innocent blood was shed because a man wanted to make money or a man wanted to build his popularity or fame or fortune. I can't help but think about the abortion meals and clinics that shed innocent blood every day that you and I live. There are literally thousands. You remember that little track we used to give out and it's called the Facts of Life. And in that tra little track, it was showing abortion uh, clinics where these girls would go, uh, thousands of them every day, and have abortion. And you know, there's several different ways that they have, uh, give and have abortions. And 
Everybody listen to me. Listen real carefully. They take them in there and they, 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 they stick, give them a shot of salt. And that salt goes in that little baby's eyes and burns that baby's eyes and gets up in its nose and burns it until it literally is suffocated and dies and is removed from the mother's womb. And then other times they use different methods where a little saw goes in and saws the little baby's legs off and arms off. And it's removed and just fills up trash cans full of little arms and legs. That goes on in so-called civilized America every single day that you and I live. Now, I want to tell you something here tonight, friend. One of these days, one day, some of these folks are going to stand before God with the blood of little babies all over this country dripping off of their hands and God's going to say, I hate... You know what? Out there in California, there's a doctor performing an abortion. And when he performed this abortion, the little baby was laying over here on the table. And the nurse came in and says, Doctor, it's still alive. It's still alive. And the baby was moving. And they put it over there and put a sack and put it some plastic over its neck or something and suffocated it and killed it. And the, the police found out about it and came in and charged them with murder. Now, that was a mistake. They tried to kill it over here, but it lived over here, and the police got them for murder. Listen, what's the difference in killing it five minutes before in the mother's womb than taking it over here and killing it? I want you to know, brother, it's big business. It's big business. It's big business. And, brother, every person who has a support in that mess and every doctor who performs one after a nurse is asked to participate in that, if she has any uh, uh, morals about her, she ought to say, no way, I'm not participating in the taking of that little innocent baby's life. He's got just as much right to live as anybody ever had. I sure am glad John the Baptist mama didn't have an abortion, ain't you? Ain't you glad Mary, the mother of Jesus, didn't say, well, I believe I'll kill this baby before it's born? Well, I mean, you'd have been in a mess for sure. I'm saying here tonight, I, I know what these girls say. They say, well, it's my body. I'll do what I want to. Well, then you can kill your body. We ain't fussing at you about that. You ought to let that young and live, though. Amen. You ain't got no right to kill his body. Don't kill yours, kill it. It's your business. But you don't have the right to kill that baby. I'm telling you, the Bible said God hates hands that shed innocent blood. There's been a lot of people who were arrested for crimes because of money, and they did not have the money to pay a crooked lawyer. And brother, they owe somebody framed them. And brother, they went to prison. And maybe sometimes uh, died by hanging or maybe in the electric chair and their blood was shed and they was innocent of the crime. God said He hates that kind of uh, dealing, that kind of crookedness. The Bible said God hates hands that shed innocent blood. Now, the Word of God tells us that. But let me say number four. The next thing God hates is a heart that devises wicked imaginations. Heart that deviseth wicked imagination. Oh, when you think of the implication of that verse, and you think of all that's going on in the world tonight, how that there are wicked hearts manned by the millions. You know, when I hear about all the wicked things that will do out there in the world, now please listen carefully and give me your attention and try to keep it quiet. Everybody listen. I think about all the wicked things that's going on, on out in the world. I tell you, brother, it shocks me. It, but I don't even see how they could think up some of that. I do. I don't see how they could think it up, let alone have the mind and the heart to do such acts as committed. Brother, there's people living in this world and I, their heart is so evil. Their heart is so wicked and black that my dear friend, although from one day till the next, is have wicked imagination. Imaginations, and it's costing us by the future of our young boys and girls. In Sweden, only 5% of the girls are pure when they go to the marriage altar and 2% of the boys. Now, in Sweden, they say you do whatever you want to. There's no rules. There's no morals. There's no such thing as fornication. You do whatever you want to. Now, you say, well, Brother Danny, are they getting along pretty good? They have the highest suicide rate of any country in the world. 
You know why? Because all of that premarital sex and fooling around and having wickedness in your heart, it'll drive you crazy and you'll wind up killing yourself. Because you can't live with it. I'm here to tell you, brother, God hates a heart. That is wicked imagination. There's things going on in America. In America tonight, there are Satan worship groups and black, holding black masses. And they're breaking... I read about just an article. How that down in Florida, they were a teenage gang who worshiped Satan were breaking into churches. And at night, they'll sneak into churches and they'll come over and turn the furniture over and take Bibles and rip them apart and have black masses on the altar of God's church and brother break windows and tie things and slice up the seats with knives and go back to the guest book and sign Satan has been here on the guest books of the church. All oh, the wicked imaginations that people have. I've heard about people uh, in, in doing all these things. You know, just pranks. You ever know somebody that all they've done was just sat around saw sort of some old wicked thing that and maybe it's, it may start out um, it may start out in just a, a, a practical joke you might call it but some of those practical jokes got to be disasters. One time there's a guy in this in this factory where they work and they had a habit of playing jokes on each other with an air hose and so they, this guy was over here sleeping they went over and tied his tied it around his wrist. And tied this other wrist, tied his legs and around his shirt and around his collar and everything. And went around and stuck the air hose up in his shirt and went and get him some air. And the pressure got so that it mashed it inside and he collapsed and he died. And what started out to be a practical prankster's joke turned out to be a horrible death. Some teenagers were going home from church one afternoon, driving along a nice country road. Another couple was cut the road with a little baby in the car. The teenagers came to an intersection. The other couple came up this way. They hit each other, and there were two, two girls got killed. They found a little baby laying way out there in a field, dead. And the mom, they had to be treated in the hospital. And what happened was some boys had went down there that night and took up the stop sign and stole it away as a joke. And it cost people their lives and uh, they were charged, uh, if they ever called them, with mass murder. The Bible said God hates a heart that deviseth wicked imagination. If you sympathize with this, with this ungodly world, you're having a part. I don't even see how they can think up some of the rot and filth people do nowadays. Now, I don't want to get too plain, but I don't want to leave you in the dark either. These things going on in this world tonight, my dear friend, that absolutely will make you sick and turn your stomach. I don't see how in the name of common decency people can commit the act they commit nowadays. Their hearts are so wicked. And I want to tell you, listen, I, I, got a, I got an article. I don't know if I got it with me or not. I believe it's it right here. And I got an article here, yeah, about morality. Now you listen to this. Down in Florida, just not long ago, Nine-year-old boy and a seven-year-old boy accused of abusing eight-month-old baby daughter, girl, their sister, to death. Nine-year-old boy, seven-year-old boy. And it said that from St. Petersburg, Florida, they are charged with a sexual abuse and torture of eight-month-old Barbara Marks. The boy whose defense lawyer said that the boy was acting out what he saw in his mama's pornographic magazine. And a seven-year-old boy and a nine-year-old boy killed an eight-month-old baby girl. And they threw her. They, they, let, me, let me just read it to you. The baby who was being cared for by the boy's mother was tormented to death after the boy and his seven-year-old brother abused the girl with a pencil and a coat hanger. 
The older boy said that they hit the baby in the mouth, shook her, and threw her to make her be quiet. The cause of death was blunt trauma to the chest and abdomen and was consistent with the fact that one boy knelt down with his knees on the little girl's chest. The mother acknowledged keeping hardcore pornography in full view of those little boys. And a nine-year-old and a seven-year-old were simply doing what they saw in Mama's magazine. Now, you listen to me tonight. Whoever it was took those pictures and published that magazine is responsible for the death of that baby girl. And brother, you can tell a lie, Flint, or you have to, I said so. God Almighty and the Mafia and everybody else, that God Almighty will judge that bunch or every sexual murder that happens as a result of that filth and that trash. And if you're here tonight and you've got a television set, I know most people in here have, that's your business. I have one. Many of you have one. And I want to tell you something tonight. If you don't control what comes over that thing, if you sit there and allow filth to come in your living room, and if you moms and dads ain't got no more sense than to go to bed and leave your kids up not knowing what they're looking at, not knowing what they see, you, you don't realize that God hates that has wicked imagination. When you start talking about hell's box office, I don't even see no sense in a person even having such. I mean, I don't know what's on there. Well, I guarantee you 99% of it ain't fit for a dog to look at. I'm here to tell you tonight, satellites and cable and HBO and primetime normal television is going to be the damnation of this country if something ain't done about it. Now, I'm here to tell you tonight, if you're a Christian, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You ought to be ashamed. You mamas, you low-down things, you, you ought to be ashamed watching them commit adultery and drink liquor in front of your young ones and setting a high example for them like that. You say, Brother Danny, I ain't coming back. Good, we need the room. Wicked imagination. Wicked imaginations. If you sit there and watch that filth in your living room, women, you've got a wicked heart and you're going to be responsible. You are partaking with them people that devise that stuff. You go up here and rent you some movies. About time somebody cracked down on that too, you know what? There's some good ones. There's Walt Disney. There's, there's sports events. There's things like that. Anything showing adultery and people messing around going to bed with each other, disrobing and intimate scene. Listen, a Christian ain't got no business looking at that stuff. And one of these days you'll thank me for telling you so. I know what some of you think. You're sitting back there thinking, well, old brother, he's on it again. He'll be off of it in a little while. We can, we can feel good for another month or two before he gets on it again. But you got to do something about that. You can't justify it no way in the world. You can't do it. You can't do it. It cannot be justified. You say, well, there's filth on radio. I know that. I've got radio. I know which station to listen to and which, which one not to. You ought to know which least to watch and which movies not to watch. Well, it's only got a few cuss words in it. Why, well, you nut? If I come over in your living room and I said, damn, and I said, hell, in that context, you know what you do? You'd say, Brother Danny, I'm sorry, you'll just have to leave. I can't have you talking like that in front of my kids. You'll let J.R. do it. Throw him out. Be consistent. If you, some of you, you caught your young'uns over at the neighbor's house peeping in, Watching your neighbor's wife slip into her nightgown, you'd beat the tar out of it. 
And yet you sat right there and let them watch that same stuff. In full color, man. With music in the background. God hates every bit of that. It's wicked. You say, well, Brother Danny, there ain't no good moves on. Well, I believe you'll live. Surely you will. Bless your little old hearts. I mean, you're just going to have them for live forever and ever and ever. God eternal life. And you're not going to hell. I mean, you're pitiful, I know. But you, you, might, have, you might make it. You poor widow thing. Don't get to watch no more dirty movies. Ain't you persecuted? You're plum pitiful. You know it? Fourteen big meals a day. Steak any time you want it. Drive in a nice car. Sit in a nice church building. Sleep in a nice bed. Oh, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Uh, don't know what all I ought to say about that. Fifth thing God hates tonight is feet that swift and run into mischief. Now, I'm not going to stay on that quick, but you know what the Bible said about idle, busy bodies? There's some people that, man, all they, they spend their time in nothing else but to hear or tell some new thing. You hear about down there? Hey, let's go down there and say, well, I heard they was going to have a fight, and I heard so-and-so was going to beat the tar out of somebody. Let's go down there. Their feet are swift to run to mischief. I remember back when we was in school, Somebody would say, it's fight, fight, man. They'd be, everybody would run down there. We want to see some blood, man. We want to see somebody get their eyes beat in. But you know something? Busy people have no time to be busy bodies. Feet that be swift in running to mischief. Well, let me move on. I could say some other things there maybe, but I want to move on. Number six. The sixth thing God hates is a false witness that speaketh lies. Now, I talked about him this morning, but let me mention, excuse me, a few other things right quickly. This false witness that speaketh lies is different in, from a lying tongue in that. It is more like uh, maybe a witness in the witness stand. Lying for money or lying to condemn the just or the innocent or something for a bribe or, or something like that. Just, just plain old lying for a prophet. Did you know that it's easier to believe a lie that you've heard a thousand times than to believe the truth that you've only heard one time? False witnesses speak of lies. Somebody said, when in doubt, tell the truth. I heard about a little girl one time. She said, she got on the witness stand and they was having a court case and she got up there and the lawyer said, uh, honey, now didn't this happen? She said, no. They said, now honey, did how much is it? She told them how it happened. Now the lawyer cross-examined her, prosecuting attorney or whatever attorney or what they call it. She got up there and said, now honey, did this happen or did that happen? She said, this way it happened and all that. And they said, now honey, are you sure that's the way it happened? Are you sure you told the right story? And you know what she said out in the courtroom? She said, yeah, my mama said your lawyers would try to confuse me, so if I'd just be here and tell the truth every time, it'd turn out all right. And boy, they couldn't do nothing with her. And they say that a cross-examiner in a trial case can tell if a person on the witness stand is telling comes out the same. And so the Bible said God hates a false witness. It didn't say hate his tongue or his words. Hated him. You say God loves everybody. He hates a false witness and he hates a man that sows discord. There's two people that God hates. You say now brother Danny God don't hate. Hey you better watch your mouth. The word of God said he did. You better watch your dirty mouth calling God a liar like that. The Bible said he hated a false witness. You said, but he loves everybody. Well, don't you know it's possible to love somebody and hate them at the same time? You in here that's mad, you know that. 
Sure, it's possible to love somebody and hate their guts at the same time. And God does that. He loves them because He let His Son die for them, but He hates them too. Jacob I love, Esau have I hated. That's the Bible doctrine you don't ever hear preach. God hates some people. Don't argue with me. That's what the book said. He said, I disagree. Well, I can't help. Listen to this. Emmanuel Kant one day was going down the road and a bunch of robbers got him and robbed him. And he was scared and he was holding up his hands like this and they said, Is that all your money? He said, All. Oh. And boy, they took off down the road. And when they left, he just kind of went like this, you know, and everything. Put his hands down in his coat, and he found this gold piece that was sewed in his garment that he'd forgot about. And he found that gold piece. And you know what the first thing he thought was? I told him I. Boy, y'all getting quiet. <laughs> And so he runs after the robbers and catches up with them. It's the truth. You say, when did that happen? A long time ago. When God blessed, remember? And he runs after the robbers and catches up with them and said, Boy, I, I told you all a lie. I got another piece of gold here in my pocket. Glory to God, brother. That's honesty. You say, well, he's stupid. Yeah, but boy, I bet he could sleep at night, don't you? <laughs> now, if that had been most stuff, we'd have said, <laughs> put one on them. <laughs> they thought they got my gold out. Uh, thank Lord. You, the Lord didn't do that. You crook. He didn't do that. And you know what happened? It shook them old boys up so bad, they give him his other money back. <laughs> You ever heard honesty is the best policy? That's, you know, our young people need to be taught and set an example from mom and daddy. You do people honest. You know what? Moms and dads do a lot of damage. They come in for this. <laughs> I'm in that store. Give me back ten dollars. Too much change. You know, boy. Oh, boy. The Lord sure took care of me on that. No, Lord didn't take care of you. You're a crook. You're a crook. Who was it went with me to the revival? We was down there at the revival the other night. It was when we stopped with all y'all. I think uh, Bodie was with me and Jeff. You know when they didn't put my meal on the ticket? Oh, it was Linda and, and Sister Linda Hout. We got down there and I always kind of figured up in my mind about how much it's going to be. And when I looked at the ticket, they add drinks, they add refills, they add, you know, and all this stuff. And I... And boy, when I looked at that bill, I said, man, that thing is cheap. And it was me and Bodie and uh, I think all on my ticket I made out pay for her own. I'd bought one for her a few days before that. But anyway, they threw us on there, and it wasn't about six, seven dollars. And I thought, man, we burnt them somewhere, didn't we? And I got to looking, and they didn't even have mine on there. You say, Brother Danny, what'd you? Don't. I wouldn't think such a thing. I'm low down and I'm sorry, but you know what the first thing I thought was? Go up there and tell her. And so I went and I told the waitress, I said, uh, ma'am, you kind of forgot something here. Uh, my spaghetti or something, whatever I had, wasn't on there. Or I had uh, uh, fish and chips or something like that. I said it wasn't on there. And she said, oh, I'm sorry. And she started adding on there and everything. She said, I appreciate you telling me. And you know something? It wouldn't surprise me if a lot of times people like that, you know, we witnessed them girls down there all the time, giving tracks and everything. It wouldn't surprise me sometimes and set you up just to see if you're what you claim to be. It wouldn't surprise me if on your job, sometimes you think you're getting by with something and your boss man's looking right over your shoulder to see if you're an honest person. You say, well, Brother Danny, I'm a crook. I admit it. What am I going to do? Work on that thing. 
Ask God to forgive you. Be honest. It's hard to go up and tell somebody I've done you wrong or I lied to you, but get it, keep a clear conscience before God. You know why? Because God hates a false witness that speaketh lies. Do people right? Don't lie about your taxes. Don't lie about what you paid somebody, what you didn't do. Somebody say, ah, what he don't know won't hurt him. Might not hurt him, but it'll sure hurt you. The last thing God hates tonight is he that soweth discord among brethren. Sowing seeds of antagonism and suspicion. And I preached on this this morning, so I'm not going to dwell on it tonight. I'm just going to go ahead and maybe mention a thing or two. I'm going to hush. You know what God hates? He hates people that see a bunch of brethren like this right here. And me saying, I don't like the way them boys do. They're, they're too tied up our new man. They're, they're too close to me and they love each other. I'm going to go in there and tell them some things. And I get old Bobby over here. And I, come here, Bob. I got something to tell you now. I'm not trying to hurt you, but you're a young preacher. And I notice you've been running around with John Aulis and Ken, Jack, and these hoodlums. And I'm going to tell you something about I'm not trying to judge them or anything. I just thought you ought to know that. I want you to get hurt. I really care about you. And uh, I just thought you ought to know that, okay? You know what? God hates me if I do that. You say, well, uh, if you knew what I knew about you. Listen, if, if we knew everything God knows about you, we'd pew. Don't give me that stuff. Amen, brother. That's right. We have no right at all to get around and about our brothers and our sisters. And let me tell you something tonight, folks. God has blessed this church. The Lord's been good everywhere I go. I mean, I can't go to town. I can't go to the post office. I can't go to the rest. I can't go nowhere with at least, without at least three or four people saying, Hey, boy, Danny, really looking good down there. How many having Sunday school Sunday? Have the Lord blessed you this, that? And all but him around to get me and invite him to come up here. And boy, I say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We don't deserve it. I'm here to tell you the town of Maine can't hurt this church. The bootleggers can't hurt it. The liquor store cannot hurt this church. I'll tell you what the devil would like to do to this church. He'd like to get Christians turned against each other. He'd like to get them tongues a-wagging. He'd like to get little cliques started. If I was you ladies and you boys here, I refuse to be drawn into a clique. I refuse to run around with the same crowd all the time. I'll spend a few times, little time with this bunch, little time with that bunch, little time with that bunch. How do you in no click. You know what hurts a lot of churches? You got one little group of people that does everything, and everybody else is just outsiders. Now, I'm going to tell you something tonight. If you don't do nothing in this church, you know why? It's because you don't want to. We'll give you the opportunity. If you want to teach, we'll put you to teaching. Don't sit back there and say, Well, that one little group does everything. I don't get to do it. It's because you don't want to. All you got to do is let me know, man. I'll let you preach one Sunday if you want if you want to that bad. Not long, but I'll let you. We'll give you three minutes. But you know what I mean tonight, brother? God hates he that soweth discord among brethren. You say, well, these Christian people, I just fed up with them. Yeah, I know. To love the whole world, to me it is no chore. My big problem, a neighbor next door. You ever heard this one? To live above with the saints we love, oh, won't it be glory? But to live below with the saints we know, well, that's another story. <laughs> hey, it takes the grace of God. Do you ever have, hey, do y'all ever get mad at me? <laughs> you lying things, you. I just got through preaching about like I, I seen some people. Y'all be ashamed of yourself. Now, I, I, maybe they never get mad at me. You get put out with me. I guarantee you do. You say, "Well, I think Danny should have done this," or "Why'd he do that?" or "I don't understand why." And you get your feelings hurt about it with me, and I do with you too.
I'll drop you a good one. It hurt my feelings when 175 shows up at my birthday party and 40 for visitation. That hurts my feelings. I love the birthday party. Glory to God, we'll have another tonight if you want to. But that lets me know you can be free on a weeknight if you really want to bad enough. That hurts my feelings. It does. It's hard not to be mad at you. That's a shame to be mad at somebody who mailed me $200 worth of luggage and, and a new suit and died and everything. And, but I'm not mad at you. I really ain't. I love you. And you know why I ain't mad? Because I understand that you're human just like I And I know how the devil works on you. And if I was news, I probably wouldn't come to this station. But that wouldn't make it right. I'm being honest. That's, you don't want to get up here and lie, do you? But boy, I'd wonder about all the things y'all got mad at me about. But you know what we got to do? We got to just say, we're human. Nobody's perfect. I'm not going to be everything you want me to be. And brother, a pastor better learn real quick that people ain't going to be everything he thinks he ought to be. And I learned that a long time ago, and I accept that. I'm trying to force you to do nothing, change your life by my own. It'd be a waste of time if you did. But I accept you like you are. You accept me like I am. And brother, we learn to get along and let bygones be bygones and hold arm in arm. The devil can't hurt this church if we don't start turning enemies against each other. If some jealousy don't get in, or if some hard feelings don't get in, or if some tongues don't start a wagon, and if people keep bringing people, then ain't a thing in the world the devil can do with this church. Brother, it'll run over him. It's like a bulldozer. The gates of hell can't prevail against him. But if you've got hard feelings against me or anybody in here tonight, you know what you need to do? You need to pray until God takes those feelings away. That's what you need to do. I've had to do it. I've had to do it. I think about old brother John there. I, I, I know, he'd never let me know it, but I'll guarantee you I have rubbed him the wrong way many a time. He can have songs all picked out up here, and I'll come up here in a split second and say, sing that. His law choir leader couldn't put up with that. And I know he probably gets mad, but he never lets me know. You know what that lets me know? He's a spiritual man. You know a man that ain't spiritual, he'll haul off and hit you or something. Or he'll get mad and say, well, I quit my job. But a spiritual person can take a lot. Brother Dale, there's, there's no telling what he's been through. He thought he's really getting in on something good here. I'll guarantee you he testified, brother. If anybody thinks this ain't, this ain't a headache goes on here through the week, and the only time we have anything going on is on Sunday, just ask him, brother. Ask him. It's something from daylight till dark, seven days a week. I kid you not, brother. Well, I'll guarantee you if he got in the flesh, he'd, he'd flat pitch a fit once in a while. He's, rep he's right between. Uh, old brother Jeff Alverson told me the other night, he said, well, I had a building program, I stayed in the flesh the whole time. That's what he said. He said, I stayed in the flesh. It's hard to be spiritual and fool that mess, ain't it, brother? Man, it's, you wouldn't believe it. I get so aggravated I can pull my hair out. Well, Mr. Castle, we must have this. We must have, I said, no, shut up! I've heard that, and I've heard that, and that phone's ringing, and man, we ain't even got a building up yet. There's no telling. That's why a lot of churches, when they go into the building program, by the time the building's finished, they don't need it. The church is done split, and half of them done left, and ain't nobody sat in it. But I'm determined by the grace of God to ride her out, brother. I'm determined by the grace of God. You know why goal is? For to be standing room only the first Sunday. Amen. I'm here to tell you, brother, you know what? You know what? The only thing that can stop that, the only thing that can stop that is somebody sowing this cord among the brethren. If you got hard feelings me or anybody else, man, you ought to just say, by the grace of God, for the work's sake, for the work's sake, for the work's sake, I lay my feelings on the altar. I confess it, God, I get it out. I don't want to cause no discord among brethren. Because people can sense it when you're in oil. You women, God, people can sense it when you're not loyal to your husband. 
You don't have to come and say, I'm rebellious. They know it. You don't have to tell them. You husbands that don't love your wife, you don't have to say, bless God, I care a thing about the old lady. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows it. He that soweth discord. I heard about a man one time. Got mad because he couldn't have his way in the church. And you know what he done? They got in a big church feud and a fuss and fighting him and some other, uh, him somebody went down and padlocked the church door. Bored holes in the front door, run a chain all the way around through there and padlocked her so the other bunch couldn't get in. He said, they'll come in over my dead body. They buried him on Saturday, had church on Sunday. Let me tell you something tonight. You want to do something mean? Go, go be a, a, a murderer or a prostitute or something like that. Don't ever get in the way of God's church. I like that little song. If the devil gets in the road, we'll roll right over him. If the devil gets in the road, we'll roll over him. And we won't be left behind. As far as me and my house concerned tonight, we're with the church, brother. We're with it. I ain't going to buck the church. He that soweth discord among brethren. I've heard over story after story, a thing like I just told you all a minute ago, and I, I'm, and I had all the details right or something like that, but I've heard other stories of people trying to stop people from having church, and God killed them, or, or things about to that nature. He that soweth discord among brethren is an abomination to the Lord. Don't ever be guilty of that. Lord help, don't ever be guilty of that. You may not like nothing that's going on. By the grace of God, say, man, I, 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 I just go out and quit altogether before I'd sow discord among my brethren. Let's bow our heads. I preach to you today on seven things God hates. Two this morning, five tonight. Now, I don't reckon this is what you'd call evangelistic message or anything. I don't know. Maybe, maybe somebody in here does need to come to the altar. I, I really don't know. I, only thing I know to do is pray and sing a couple of verses of some song. And if God's dealing with your heart this evening, and you want to come to the altar and pray, we're going to give you that chance. Will you? will you? Will you just do what God wants you to do? Father, do what needs to be done now in this invitation. God forbid that we would ever be guilty of these seven things you hate. In Jesus' name, amen.